Good evening and welcome to this edition of the Sports Den Live. My name is Dominic Papa. Thanks for joining us this evening for some great sports dis discussion here on the Sports Den Live. Before we get to our panel and get to our topics of the evening, of course, I got to give a couple of shout outs. I want to give a shout out to the Lady Lancers basketball team off to a perfect 4-0 start to defending their four-time Canadian Championship, Chantal Vallée and the girls looking pretty strong right now. Also, the St. Clair College men's volleyball team off to a really nice start this year under the guidance of Rob Lynch. They are 5-1 and one right now in the early campaign, so hopefully they'll keep that going. And the Windsor Express basketball team, of course, playing quite well at home on a three-game winning streak. They're now 3-1 and one and battling for first place. A huge game tomorrow night against the London Lightning, a battle for first place at the Windsor Family Credit Union Center. Get out and check out the Windsor Express and help them to a victory. On this edition of the Sports Den, we're going to talk a little bit about the baseball free agency. We touched off on it last week, of course, a, a little bit, but we're going to continue on because of one contract that was just recently signed. It's caught everyone's attention. A lot of people are talking about it. We want to get the panel's thoughts on that. The other part of the show, we're going to talk about sports venues, arenas, stadiums, whatever. What makes them iconic? What are the most iconic sports venues? And are any of the today's venues going to have an iconic status? Will let the panel let us know what they think about that. Of course, uh, you can watch us on our YouTube channel, uh, or you can get involved with our discussion. You can see our uh, Twitter account right there, at Sports Den Live. We'd love to have you tweet in. Of course, if I get time, I'll read some of the comments or some of the questions, and you can participate in this discussion. Let's now get to the panel and uh, get the things going here on the Sports Den. First time guest for us. I think he may be setting a record here tonight. He might be the youngest guest to ever appear on the Sports Den, and that's a lot of guests. Uh, he's 17 years old, and uh, he's a sports encyclopedia. That's why we asked him to come in. I'm talking about Matt Petroni. Welcome to the show, Matt. Thanks for having me. What is your passion for sports? What drives you? Um, I just love watching it, mm -hmm. and I, I just I, I, I can't get enough of watching is, sports. Is there any one sport or any one athlete that, that you just you got to have a part of or just need to know about? No, no, I can watch them all. Yeah? Do you have a favorite sport? To watch or to yeah. play? Well, okay, both. Um, to play would be soccer, okay. and to watch would be hockey. Okay, now soccer, I would imagine it's the European soccer stuff, right? Yeah. And you follow that quite closely? Oh, oh yeah. Okay, who's the best player in the world right now? Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Why? Because he can do things with the ball that just nobody else can mm -hmm. even think about doing. Mm -hmm. and the Italians are suffering right now, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I feel your pain too there, Matt, <laughs> so it's okay. But uh, thanks for coming into the show. We'll look forward to your comments here tonight. Thanks for having me. Also joining us on the show, an extremely hardworking man, uh, somebody that really stuck his neck out this last year for the uh, good of our community, he kept the junior football basically alive, and uh, he's doing a great job. They're coming off another OFC championship. They won back-to-back -back championships. He's one of the coaches there, an associate coach. He's also the owner of the AKO Fratman football team. Of course, we all know him as Mr. Mike Morenzi. Welcome to the show, Coach Morenzi. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Back-to-back. -back. Yep. Nice. Repeat now. Well, work has that, begun. That, that's, that's the plan, <laughs> isn't it? That's you get a plan. week off or you get right back yeah. on the uh, on Well, the I, I would imagine this year was a little bit different for you, though, the offseason, than, than all of your years of football. Oh, it's... When you got some skin in the game, it, it changes everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it changes your outlook. You've got some skin. I, in had, I got a lot of skin in the game, <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah. it's it's different, and I'm I'm looking forward to having a year's experience and, and mm -hmm. doing it again mm -hmm. and make the changes we yeah. have to make. And that's a good point you bring up or allude to, anyways, Mike. I think now that you've got the year under your belt, uh, I'm sure it's going to be. I'm not. It's going to be. There's always got to be hard work put in, but you can at least now gauge where you need to go. Yeah, and there's a list of do's and don'ts. I think the second yeah. time you go through something, or, you know, maybe something we did this show, we we'll never do that again, or that mm -hmm. wasn't a good allotment of our time or an allotment of our money, and then something else might be, boy, we have to do that better this mm -hmm. year because that's really worth it for the program. Mm -hmm. So I made a big list as soon as the season was mm -hmm. done, and I'm going to work on that list yeah, for the well, next couple of months. It's okay. It's all part of the growth process, yeah. but winning championships helps that cause. It sure does. Yeah. It's a nice way to go and talk to people when you're winning as opposed to, well, we were, you know, two and six last mm -hmm. year, that type mm -hmm. of thing. So, yeah. I know one of the issues, I don't want to call it an issue yet, uh, one of the concerns uh, is the stadium. Uh, anything in the horizon there for you, Mike? And do you see something? <laughs> well, I know it's a tough topic if you, right now. If you know something, please let me yeah. know. Well, We're I talking to a, a number of people about a number of different situations, and uh, I'm getting impatient. I'd like to yeah. get something rocking and, and something out there pretty soon. And uh, as you know, we, we've talked to a number of people mm -hmm. over the last couple mm -hmm. of months, so it'd be nice for somebody to 
make a nice firm offer so we can figure out what's going to go on in 2015. Well, hopefully it'll happen because I'm sure it's going to ensure the viability of AKO football, or all football for that it's, matter. It's a huge issue for our community. Yeah, it's it's yeah. something uh, extremely necessary, and we've got to get somebody to step to the table to get, to get that venue taken care of. All right. Well, done a great job with the team again this year. Thanks for coming in tonight, Mike. Also joining us, uh, mm -hmm. boy, I've had a chance to uh, work with this uh, guy now for about uh, six weeks. Uh, an unbelievable mind uh, as far as business goes, but also a tremendous sports person that uh, follows his sports closely. And uh, he just does great things for our community. He's a big uh, follower of a lot of uh, different groups and events in our community. And uh, he's now part of WeTV, I'm proud to say. So I want to introduce Mr. Walter Hansen. Welcome oh, to the show, right. Walt. Thank you for Walt is me. now our new sales and marketing director, but I told him he's got to come talk sports with me once in a while. We talk a lot of sports anyways. And yeah. I know you're, a, you're just as big a fan as uh, all of us here at this table. Oh, and yeah. and uh, just to go, <laughs> when I had asked Walt to come on the show, I told him one of the things I'd like to talk about are some of the different venues. So Walt was kind enough. Uh, I'll let you hold that up, Walt, and maybe Christina can get a good shot. Hold it up towards Christina's camera. Uh, this is the... <laughs> actual dirt, dirt from uh, the Yankee former Stadium. Yankee Stadium yep. that uh, Walt has in his uh, numerous collections of sports memorabilia. Yep. Certificate and of an authenticity. There's a certificate and everything, uh, but that just tells you what Walt's all about. He's got all kinds of stuff, so uh, okay. kind of neat to have that, yeah. that stuff. Do you have a favorite time of year of sports, or do you just go 12 months? I love the time of year when you, we roll from the uh, Final Four into the hockey, basketball playoffs, and then, uh, <clears throat> you know, and starting a baseball. Mm -hmm. that, that's just a great time of year. It's just like boom, 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 one after the other, and after the other, after the other, and then next thing you know, wow, football's starting again. It's like, just that's a great time of year. It's just uh, something I really look forward to, like when the, the tournament starts, and mm -hmm. I just look like, oh, now I got TV now for <laughs> months and months ahead of great TV, mm -hmm. great, great sporting, uh, you know. How, how do you juggle it all? <clears throat> You've got a wife, family, wife, uh, you know, family. Yeah. responsibilities, and yeah, great yeah, thing you get to, you DVRs. Get, you get to go to the, a lot of events. You, yeah, I do. Yeah, take in quite a few events. Uh, I take in quite a bit of flack, and, <laughs> <laughs> and you know. So, but uh, on the other hand, I took my uh, eight-year-old. He's a big Montreal Canadiens fan. We went and enjoyed the game Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Nice four-to-one victory. Um, yeah. So, and he sat from mm -hmm. beginning to end, just loved it. And mm -hmm. first thing he goes. Hey, can we go to the Senators game next week? <laughs> I've never seen them play. I go, you just asked me what game this was. Well, so, and like, it was important, like, going back to this sure. dirt from Yankee Stadium. Uh, my little guy was two years old, and I made sure that we got to Yankee Stadium so he could say he was at Yankee Stadium, yeah. tell his friends he was there. You know, so we got the pictures. He's got his ticket stub still, and uh, ended up being at the 10th last game there at Yankee Stadium wow. that year. And so, and, and he's still proud of that because he's developed into a quite the Yankee fan as well. And yeah, the apple doesn't fall far from the no, tree there. No, no. Not when you're throwing the apples down. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. Well, yeah. good stuff, Walt. Thanks for coming in, and uh, really great to have me. you on board with WeTV. Uh, we're going to get right into our first topic. We talked a little bit about baseball free agency last week. There wasn't a lot going on, but boy, oh, boy, how things can change quickly, and it did. Uh, of course, Carlos uh, Stanton uh, from the Florida Marlins, $325 million dollars. <laughs> Uh, Thirteen-year contract, two eighty hitter, hits uh, thirty to forty home runs. Wow, this one really threw me for a loop, guys. I don't know what you guys thought of it, and I thought, okay, well, maybe this is going to open up that floodgate of free agency. Mind you, Max Scherzer is having a hard time finding a deal. Uh, you know, no one wants to commit to the six-year deal at two hundred million. Uh, he's getting one fifty at best. So, where do you think this is going, Matt? Um, for, for Stanton or for Scherzer? Well, Stan, for the free agency overall. Free agency market overall. I think it will, the, the rest of the players in the league will be looking for more money now after what Stanton's got on not what did you think of phenomenal the numbers. What did I think of? The deal. I think it was a waste of money because the, with baseball, especially outfielders, they can easily go cold really quickly or get injured for... Mm -hmm. Long periods of time, and it's just a waste of money. Mm -hmm. Mike, I know AKO isn't offering that kind of money right now. <clears throat> what, would, what would Babe Ruth be right, oh, worth right now? I mean, you're talking about these numbers. <laughs> you know, Stan's had a good year. Not great, good, you know, but yeah. and, and to get that kind of money, it's just unfathomable. What an Al Kaline, what a Babe Ruth, what a Ted Williams. Sandy Koufax, all the I mean, and then we're going back in history, but you guys are well, making right. nothing. You're right. You know? Well, even going back and uh, 
<clears throat> back in, I don't know, what the early 90s, you know, and, and hearing what uh, Bernie Williams was signing for, and that was the big dollars back then. And, and I remember uh, meeting all those guys who used to come into Detroit and all these frequent mm -hmm. Windsor downtown establishments. And there was Williams and Jeter, and those guys were all there, and they're making, oh, let Bernie pay. And this is Jeter saying, because he's the one making all the big money, you know, Jeter was making nothing back, well, not nothing, but nothing compared, like, to, other guys, compared yeah. to other guys in what he finally finished up his career at. But, oh, my God. And I, I'm thinking Bernie Williams, and I'm thinking this Stanton. I go, Bernie Williams was a, a lot better ball player than I think this Stanton was, and, you know, with longevity, as you say. Yeah. Um, Stanton's still somewhat young. He's in his 20s. Um, so he's still up, you know, not up and coming. I mean, he's, he's there, but he's still young. He's relatively young. But I remember a guy by the name of Alex Rodriguez that signed a big deal when he was much younger. <laughs> where, did that, where did that all go? And hmm. well, that, he's that's, still getting it. I think that's Yankee Matt's point. Yeah. You, know, you, you never really know. And, and that's, you know, yeah, where Matt's point signs this massive contract, and maybe for now it makes some sense. To, obviously, it made sense to somebody. The Marlins it made sense to. But that Rodriguez contract, how many years are the Yankees eating on that thing? Yeah. And, and it's got to just yeah. rub them the wrong way that they just keep And they still paying, have to eat on it one more year. paying that money out. He's just sitting around, and he wasn't playing well when he finished anyways. And mm -hmm. that's the downfall of those real long, long-term contracts. But that's what the superstars want, mm -hmm. and that's the market. And if the market bears it, it, it happens. But, you know, like you said, Matt, he could come back next year and bat 265 and get 20 home runs and 85 RBIs. And what does Florida think of their deal now? Mm -hmm. When he's not striking that, yeah, not having that, yeah, not having that real that superstar year. Why do you think it's gone this way? Are teams under that much pressure to 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 make things happen like this? It's all on them knowing what the owners are making. Uh, yeah, but Florida's with not. Everything. Florida's not. You know. But Florida did it before. They went. Well, and they bought, bought it. They bought the a World championship series. team. Yeah. So uh, obviously, what they did in spending their money there to win that World Series, obviously made them enough run revenue. To continue on for a good while to, well, full circle, here it comes again, maybe, you know, maybe this is them opening the floodgates to the market too, saying, okay, well, we're, we're going to stake it this high and now maybe they'll go out and Steinbrenner everyone else, right? And just, <laughs> Steinbrenner. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's since, since right? George has been on, the Yankees have kind of cut back. Or, That's all right. Yeah. yeah. You know, they haven't uh, really done, they, they've been one of the most inactive teams during this reagency period. <laughs> still which, paying all those other contracts. Well, they're still paying all those other contracts. With that said, will this help a Max Scherzer? Does it help Shields in Kansas City? Uh, Lester, there's talk of Lester maybe going to Toronto now. How does that affect all of that? It'll probably get, it'll probably get the floodgates open and the other GMs will be probably scrambling to try to lock up all the other free agents uh, still available in the league. Mm -hmm. Think it'll help, Mike? Yeah, I mean, I look at the contract, Russell Martin. I know Matt's a Blue Jays fan, so he was happy probably getting yeah. Russell Martin in the fold. That was a lot of money for a guy who's he's a good defensive catcher, but he's never going to give you great you offensive think numbers. You a lot of money, though? I, I, for him, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just you for... At, you, what you was know. it? I think it was $18 million. I think it averaged out to about $18 million. $18 million, million yeah. a year? Yeah. Uh, I think it's $72 million over four years, yeah. something like that. Um, but you look at his numbers, and you look at what other catchers are doing... I mean, I think there's such a lack of great catching talent in baseball overall that that yeah. position is the worst in baseball. You find somebody that can play half decent behind the plate, throw in a reasonable yeah. amount of guys, Call they can the sign for anything because yeah. it's you know, outside of the Molina's family having the <laughs> yeah. you know having the edge and having all the talent. The catching is is a, is a problem at the major league level. Uh, how does this type of contract set the bar for other sports? Can it affect other sports? I, I mean, I just can't see hockey and basketball and. And even well, football's football. going that way. Look well, at a Dominic and Sue is, is about to become the richest football player in, well, he's in the become, history. Well, he's going to become the richest lineman. Yeah. You know that a quarterback's going to step up. Oh, and, for sure. And, and well, but that's that. there it or, goes. Or a it's running back. Opening uh, it up. It's going to be surpassed. And as a season ticket holder for baseball and for football, um, I'm sitting there going, oh, no. You know, there go the prices again. And, like, mm -hmm. I know with the Red Wings, there's – there's different ticket prices for the same seat. I mean, if they get in a premier team, you're paying premier prices. You know, and then if one of the lesser teams comes in, then you're back down just to your regular season ticket price. But it's like, where, where is that going to end? And that, when that keeps going up, well, the players see that, and so that keeps going up. And then when they see every jersey in the stands, you know, then they're thinking, well, okay, well, I want a piece of that too, and I want a piece of that. So it's just going to keep going up and keep going up and keep going up. Is that fair that it all falls on the fans, though? 
No. I mean, again, this has been going on for years, and I always hear from a lot of people, well, it's whatever the market will bear. Well, <laughs> to me, some of the people, the market isn't bearing it very well because there are some people that will not go to a game now because they won't pay the price of a ticket. Uh, they can't afford the price of a ticket, which is even worse. How sad is that, you know, when you can't take your son to a baseball game? And there are some people that can't do that anymore, you know, because it's just too expensive. Uh, you're paying 10 bucks for a beer, which, uh, I mean, I'm not a beer drinker, but who wants to pay 10 bucks for a beer? It affects everything. When does the fan have to step up? Is that day coming soon? I mean, NBA basketball, you can't go. NBA. I, yeah. I can't afford to go to an NBA game unless somebody gives me tickets. I think the NBA is a really the worst expensive off venue. Right now, yeah. Every, everything about you, know, parking's exorbitant. The tickets are bad. The level of play isn't that good. I mean, the NBA, I think, is struggling because it's it's becoming very mainstream, only to a certain audience. Um, football's trying really hard to match. I, I've got seasons tickets to Michigan basketball. I have for the last couple of years. I went to the day. I paid nineteen dollars for two brats and a diet. Cherry Coke, nineteen dollars. I almost cried. I said, "I said, really, two kind of saucy hot dogs and a, and a bad pop for nineteen bucks in beautiful venue." Yeah. I said to the poor girl, "Give us. Were you paying for David Brandon's body of his contract? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that wife's nineteen dollars yeah. because they got to make up that six million they own? But like nineteen bucks." Yeah, it's getting getting quite exorbitant. And then you have the television factor, and you just have to wonder when does this blow up and fans just say enough, enough. I'm going to just stay home watching on TV, and then TV is going to have to answer to all of this and, and pay the that's bills. That's when they come to the internet. Well, that's when they come to the internet. That's when they come to Wii TV and uh, talk to us about it. Uh, we're going to take a time out here on the sports den. When we come back, we'll get into our next topic. We're going to talk about uh, the iconic venues, stadiums, whatever arenas. Uh, find out which ones stand out and which ones of the present day will one day be an iconic venue. We'll talk about that right here on the sports den. We're wishing you all a very happy Christmas from Bob Ream Sports. Christmas season is upon us and we have the apparel for the sports fan in your life. We will have many specials between now and Christmas. We can supply you with the gift for the special person on your Christmas list. Ho, ho, ho. Just wanted to send out a special thank you to all of our customers from the past from Bob Ream Sports and looking forward to seeing you again in 2015. Once again, have a happy holiday. Like our champions, we know what it takes to win. Every day we put on our uniforms and we strive to be the best. Ring after ring we keep practicing until it becomes second nature. Our craftsmen have put in thousands of hours to master their trade. And when things get tough, we make the adjustments needed to stay on top. Baron Championship Rings. This is who we are. You made a lot of money this year. You made more than the president. Welcome back to the Better Sports Den. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Dominic Papa with you. We're going to get back to our next topic and our next uh, sports uh, discussion. But before we do that, uh, a reminder of a couple things that are coming up. Uh, of course, there's going to be a great soccer outing. Uh, not a soccer outing. Soccer is done. But uh, there is a night, a soccer night in Windsor coming up on the uh, 26th of uh, November. It's going to take place at the Chicharro Club. And the uh, special guest speaker is that man right there. You can see on your screen, uh, Jason Devos. He uh, also works for TSN Sports as their premier uh, soccer analyst. Uh, he'll be the keynote speaker. They're going to celebrate the legends of the 80s. We've got a lot of great soccer legends in our community. But they're also going to celebrate the youth team of the 80s. Hall of Fame nominations are going to start. Should be a fun night of great soccer. Tickets are available. You can call that number on the screen. And uh, certainly, you can be part of a great night I know I'm looking forward to being there as well. Uh, just want to uh, reintroduce our panel as well and get back to our discussion. Matt Petroni, our sports enthusiast, is here with us. Also, Mike Marincy, the owner of the AKL Fratman football team, and Walter Hansen of We Television joining us on the show this evening. At the break, uh, left it that we're going to talk about venues, different venues. We've uh, never really talked about this uh, on the sports stand, uh, but some of the old buildings are not being used anymore, or they're gone, and now you have these new uh, buildings, whether it's a stadium, an arena, whatever. Now they're talking about a new arena over in Detroit uh, for the Red Wings. Uh, looks like it's going to be a beautiful venue, but, uh, well, they can bury the Joe Louis Arena as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> that building's not iconic to me, but uh, <clears throat> there has been a lot of great e events in there, uh, and a couple of Stanley Cups have, have been won there as well. But uh, what, what arenas, what makes an arena special, or, or a, a sports venue special? What do you look for, Matt? 
Um, I look for history, usually, history. and the atmosphere when you go to the game. Yeah. If it's if if the passion's there, then usually. It's and any iconic. arena that's caught, caught your eye or stood out to you as far as history and, and things like that? Uh, the Joe Lewis one. Oh, uh, well, there you go. <laughs> so you and I just do not see eye to eye on this one. So uh, the Joe Lewis, why? I just like all the red leather seats, and mm -hmm. it's all, every seat, you're right on top of the rink, and mm -hmm. it's, I really like it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and you're squished and got no elbow room, and you got to walk up those uh, 30 flights of steps. Great building, right? <laughs> yeah. well, I, I can appreciate what you're saying. Iconic building would have been the old Chicago Stadium, mm -hmm. and seeing a hockey game there, and the Oregon, mm -hmm. that was amazing. And the good que trivia question. Uh, what was the only arena in the NHL? Wait, 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 have... wait, wait. This is my show. I'm supposed to answer questions, okay? Okay, you can answer the question. Okay, I'll geez. ask it. <laughs> Go ahead. What's the only NHL arena that didn't have blue lines? That didn't have blue lines? Chicago Stadium. They were black. Oh, they were really? Blackhawks, yeah. And then when I went back to, to the new stadium... Yeah, but that changed in, eventually. Yeah, they made them blue. league rules. Well, but they league made rules them... would stipulate it. Well, but well, when did they get rid of Chicago Stadium? When, when did the they move the Blackhawks move into the new? Oh, uh, wow, that's been anyway, when we went back there, years. I was really upset to see that they were blue lines. They weren't mm -hmm. the black lines like mm -hmm. that. So, and I but but see the organ though, I like that. that the organ really gave that place an identity. They moved that over too. Yeah, yeah, they moved the yeah, organ. They, they over, moved that so over. They, but that kind of gave that place an identity. Yeah. yeah, and if you sat up high enough, you couldn't see all of the ice because the overhang came down over you from the section before, and it was all. Oh, yeah. It was just like, yeah. not as bad as the Olympia, but pretty, mm -hmm. pretty bad. So it's the leather seats at the Joe, it's the organ at the uh, old and the black Chicago lines. Stadium and the black lines. I know you're going to go football here, right, Coach? Lambeau Field oh, yeah. is the best. It's, <laughs> it's probably the most iconic venue remaining, I think, in pro sports, at least. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some good ones have bit the dust in the last couple of years, but uh, Lambeau, no seats. Benches, you know, they've got, uh, you see, you squeeze into a 16 inch seat that's painted on there and you try to fit your, your butt in that seat and it doesn't really fit. I went to a game there once and a young lady could not fit in her seat. So she sat on everybody's lap in that row for 15, 10, 15 minutes at a time. She was went up she, and down the row and it was 15 was, minutes here. Was she good looking at least? She was a very attractive young well, lady. But you know what? If that ever happened in Detroit, there would have been a fist fight. Oh, wow. There they laughed and people are, I looked down, I'm freezing cold. A guy's got no shirt on. This girl just goes, she knows four or five people. She sits everybody's lap because she couldn't fit in her seat. And everybody's laughed about it. But yeah. um, I think Matt's right. The history of like a place like Lambeau Field, you, you walk in there and yeah. it just smells of history of the Lombardi Packers and... Brett Favre and the new team, you know, the whole nine yards. And it's just, it's the city's venue. It's got that real old kind of feel to it. It's an old place. And they're still know. using it. Yeah, and they're still using it. I mean, it's been redone, and they put yeah. a lot of money yeah. well, into it. Well, they have it. to. They have but, to. you know, all the football championships that were won there and the, yeah. the long history really makes it a, a neat place and a neat venue to go watch a sport. Is, is it the most iconic venue? Or is there venues that can compare to it? Well, I mean, you look at, for you each look sport, it's for each enthusiast. Or for the football fanatic, that is. Like, like, I was a huge Cleveland Browns fan. The No Way Was a Mistake on the Week, an I, I, iconic <laughs> building, but that dog pound that formed what became iconic. And yeah. I was there at that last game, and I broke a piece of the bench off and brought it home, well, you know, with the... Uh, this show's from been being here, in, here in Cleveland, by the way. So that's okay. <laughs> I enough. wasn't the only one that brought <laughs> home some of the uh, dog pound that day. Um, but, uh, like, you, then you go to baseball, and you have... Wrigley, that's still, you know, Fenway, of course, Yankee Stadium, you know, those, those iconic buildings. And that has a lot to do with the rich tradition of phenomenal teams and championship teams. Uh, then you go into hockey. It's tough to pick a hockey other than the form and the gardens and uh, well, you know, no, Madison I think, Square Gardens. I think, as Matt alluded to, I think every venue mm. kind of has its own identity. Uh, the Joe, I don't know what the Joe could, I mean, you like the leather seats. I, I get that, okay? But I don't know if there's anything else that stands out at the Joe. They've got the worst press box. I can, I can speak from that personally. They have the worst press box that I've ever had to sit in because you are up way up higher than the people that are in the last rows of the seats, and yet you're still trying to watch the game and everything and cover it, and players look like ants, and it's just terrible. It's, it's, it's terrible for, for media people. Uh, but I don't, I don't know if there's anything else that really stands out at the Joe. That, that the championships. The octopus. Al Sabaka. 
Right? Also, vodka is good. Yeah, there the octopus. Go. So, yeah, he, he's it's all good. depends, and then it's, again, it's a different age group, right? I mean, he's grown up watching the Red Wings win their championships, starting there, and mm -hmm. wow, you know, something at that building. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that all has to do with it too. It makes it iconic for his age group, you know, his demographic. Whereas, you know, myself and you, and then and then to Mike, and then older generations, it gets into these other kind of stadiums mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's, it's, I think it's all perception, but I mean, obviously there's the ones that stick out, but everyone has their, their reasons why something becomes... Okay, let, let me go to, this way with you guys. <clears throat> um, there's still venues that I need to get to and want to get to. Is there anything, any, what's, what's your, where's, where does your dad, Rob, have to take you before it's all said and done? Well, I've already been to Wrigley, so I need to go to Fenway okay. before... Okay, have you put that request in? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, hopefully that happens. Eric is over there. So, See, so. we can't go to Fenny because we're Yankee fans, yeah, so we cannot go there. <laughs> I cannot wear anything that day. We can't go with you that day. No. <laughs> I would love to go to Fenway. I think Fenway is a pretty neat place, and, and you know, I've only I've never been there. I haven't been to Fenway yet, so I, I think that's a pretty good one. That would be on my bucket list as far as venues to get to, uh, f for sure. Um, the other, the, I missed the Yankee. Yankee Stadium. Yeah, I haven't nice. been to Lambo yet. I'm going to get to Lambo. Lambo. Oh, so uh, we'll do a Lambo sure. trip. Yeah, we'll do the Lambo trip. But uh, um, one of the worst venues <laughs> ever, okay, and I, I hope you guys will agree with me, the Pontiac Silverdome. And it is just a wreck now, which it should have been. Yeah. It should, should have been. Yeah. And it was just horrible. What uh, made that building iconic was the... Barry uh, Sanders. No, the main event. <laughs> well, the main event, the bar. The big bar that was stretched out right across. <laughs> exactly. I There's watched a, every Celtic uh, game for $5 there, as yeah. high as you could be. But, oh, uh, when they had the no, basketball. I wasn't high. When they had the that basketball there. The yeah. 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 You were high but to stand. A $5, but, a $5 but seat to watch off. the Boston yeah. Celtics yeah. and the Pistons every time. I was a huge Celtics fan, and every time they came to town, we'd go and pay 5 bucks. And to watch Larry Bird and McKay and all those guys for $5 was yeah. neat. And that was the that only was good awesome. thing about it. That was the only good thing about it. Very good brats, though. But well, it was home to the world's <laughs> largest indoor event. They did. They, I know they've done things there, there, but it was just an awful. awful is Wembley Stadium iconic? Oh, yeah, uh, well, they just rebuilt it. Yeah, but is but is that? Um, see, I would say yeah. Yeah. Really? What, do you, what do you say? You know this kind of stuff. What do you think? I think since they tore it down and rebuilt the new one, it's. I don't think it's the same. Okay, so it's it's different. Yeah. How oh, about soccer? Which one? what soccer venue is? Like well, that's got to be someplace shoulders. over in Europe. I mean, probably in England somewhere. Yeah, Old Trafford, where Manchester yeah. United plays, is yeah. the history. Is and it's old? Yeah. It's the original yeah. Oh, yeah. old place? Yeah. 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 For sure. yeah. That's, neat. Um, that's neat. Okay, as far as the newer venues that we talked about, and I know we were talking a little bit before we came on the show here, we talked about Comerica Park. I, I don't, I mean, it's, a, it's an adequate ballpark. It's comfortable to watch a game. But I don't look at it as being an iconic stadium when it's all said and done. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some, you know, Hopefully there'll be some championships, championships. won there, but, but I don't see it being anything special when it's all said and done. I don't know if there's any venue right now that stands out that will become that uh, one stadium where you can say, you know what, that team was always going to win there. It was a big advantage to have that venue. Uh, I think it's going to be gone. I don't think that's going to happen. Everybody's become kind of cookie cutter, like baseball mm -hmm. all of a sudden is building these massive places to look older. Yeah. Camden Yard started it. Brand right. new place doesn't look that old, or doesn't look that new. And then Comerica was the same thing. Build old parts of the ballpark into it. San Francisco, same thing. Philadelphia. Yeah, everybody terrible. got these parks, spent billions on them, but made them look old. You know, well, so baseball did that. Nobody just came out like, you know, with, with Jerry Jones with down in Dallas. He made it big and huge and palatial and everything else. He didn't care. But baseball made everything look similar. Everybody downsized. Mm -hmm. Tiger Stadium, Comerica was smaller. And Philadelphia was smaller. And, you know, but they so got I kind think, of cookie cutter. I, I think football mentality. stadiums can still create a mystique of its own. Well, Dallas, well, but Dallas, I mean, that's, uh, just, that's like more said, like going to Disneyland, going to <laughs> Dallas. I mean, he's not <laughs> built an iconic stadium. He's, he's built an iconic structure. I mean, everyone wants to go there. You don't even know if the game's going on. Your I think college is way different. I was just, oh, you know what, boy, honestly, yeah. I was Michigan just going to say, what about yeah. the big house? We got 30 seconds. What about the big house? Where does that rank? That's got to be up there for the... Have you been there? Yeah. You like it? Twice, yeah. You like it on the benches? You're yeah. okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Best venue I've been to college basketball, Cameron Indoor. 9,000 yeah. people, Miami versus Duke a couple of years ago, both teams in the top five. Crazy. It's like St. Dennis Hall, a little bit oh, bigger. Oh, wow. Neat. Massive. Okay. Just what, a, what an event. All right. Yeah, I enjoyed okay. Michigan State. Michigan? Michigan okay. State. 
Good stuff. Uh, we got to wrap things up here. Matt, thanks for coming in. Mike, thanks for coming in. Well, we'll Thank talk you. to you soon. Uh, that's this edition of the Sports Den. Hope you enjoyed it. Check us out again the next Tuesday evening. We'll be back here at Sports Den Live, and we'll be doing it up, talking it up, uh, all kinds of different sports stuff right here on the Sports Den. Until then, this is Dominic Papa wishing you a great week. Take care, everybody.